Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in today's episode we have with us senior journalist, columnist, film critic and best-selling author Miss Bharati Pradhan. A Sunday columnist with The Telegraph, Ms. Bharti Pradhan has written many fiction and non-fiction books including biographies of Indian singer, musician and actor Anoop Jalota and legendary actor and member of parliament Shatrughan Sinha. Bharti has edited several magazines including Star and Style, Lehre and Showtime and has written for a variety of publications like Femina, Reader's Digest and Midday. She has served on the jury of many prestigious awards committees and has been the chairperson of the National Awards for Best Writing on Cinema. Over the years, Ms. Bharti Pradhan has enlightened us through her writings and today it gives me immense pleasure to welcome her on The Mahua Show. Welcome in today's episode. So, tell me the first memory you have of watching a film. Of watching a film? Uh, well, it's strange because, you know, I grew up uh, watching only English films because I um, you know, we're just not used to Hindi films. And we, for me, I was weaned on Beatles and Cliff Richard. So maybe the first film I remember seeing was about Elsa the Linus. And um, which was way back in the 60s. I was in school at that time. We saw it and I was in the midst of exams. I don't know why my parents took us to see that film. But we all came back. We loved it. I fell in love with Linus's after that, actually. And I'm a Leo. I was born in August. So maybe because of that. So coming back to films of today, you know, I mean, there's such a change, right? And uh, there's Sanjay Leila Bhansali and all. Because if you talk about the times, I think it was Ten Commandments. And there was, um, you know, films like that, uh, that we saw. Huge ben canvas. Her, you know, huge canvas. And uh, in India, we know, uh, we know Sanjay Leela Bhansali to make those sort of films, right. you know. What do you think of him as a director? And what do you think of all the stage that he puts together? Is the credit really, does it go out beyond that, you know, beyond the actors in an entire film For sure, set? it goes beyond actors. And I think it has a lot to do with the filmmaker. Especially a person like Bansali. I don't know why you have picked his name, but whatever it is, whatever the reason, Sanjay Leela Bansali definitely represents a kind of cinema which uh, has the director in complete command irrespective of who the actor is. Because Ranveer Singh was not such a huge actor when he made his first film with him and he's made three films with Ranveer. So, uh, Bansali is the kind of uh, director who has complete control over the music. These days he started giving the music also himself. You know, the credit goes to him for that as well. And, yeah, and you know, he's also the person who brought a person like Ismail Darbar. Who knew Ismail Darbar before he came in and, you know, he scored such fabulous music for him. Yes. I mean, the Devdas music is even today. Yes. Uh, it, it's still a chart buster. You listen to it, you still get goosebumps. So, And you need a director who's in complete control of all departments. He's also got this fabulous sense of visuals. Costume. So song, dance, costume. And he's got this grip over emotion. What else do you need in a film? So if Absolutely. you've got the canvas, you've got the vision, you've got music, you've got an eye, you've got the cinematography in your, it's there in his mind's eye. What else do you need? So I think he really represents this vastness of Hindi cinema. Yes, he does. And a lot of people have tried to replicate it. I would think to a large extent, Om Raut, you may not have heard the name, but if I mention the film he made, Kanaji, which he made with Ajay Devgan, which won the National Award recently. Om Raut worked with uh, Sanjay Leela Bansali and you can see that grandeur and you can see the scale on which he's made Tanaji and it's got everything you want in a film. It's such a satisfying film. I, I love Tanaji. So I think, you know, when you have, and then they have, a, it's, a very, it's very Indian in its thinking and in its representation and the, you know, the entire, you, you, the, these are not films that are inspired by Hollywood. Yes. Absolutely. Which is actually the best part about it. Yes, yes. This so is Hindi I, yes. cinema. I, I, why I brought up Sanjay Leela Bhansali is that because, you know, we come from that uh, time, I think, when we saw these sort of very immersive storytelling with huge cast. And I think he's done a great job in putting yes. this entire set together. Yes, and, yes. Uh, you know, when you're completely, you get, uh, you're absorbed in the entire storytelling. 
to this day for me hum dil de chuke sanam gives me goosebumps i mean you just think of that hum dil de chuke sanam you just think of that um, title song and you know you just sit up yes absolutely they've had such a, a huge impression yes. and films i think is is an amazing um, uh, thing it cuts across all uh, you know uh, status because i think you have everybody who watches films in yes. india you know and yes. it's it's a great way for people to uh, as a source of entertainment yes. and i remember we come from that time when our uh, uh, you know night outs used to be watching a film and right. uh, probably eating something and coming back it yeah. wasn't so much about uh, um, you know going across to friends houses yes. they were mostly families that you met right, you know right. of course films today has had a huge change from before you know yes. from the past to now so what is your um, take actually bharti now on cinema where does it stand now you know with all these uh, ott platforms and everything coming in for me i love the big screen so you know the day i think when covid was happening and when covid was just uh, you know and the first movie that came out i was the first person to go in there and sit and watch because i think films uh, to immerse yourself you need the sound system to be like that you need of course i do watch netflix i do watch movie and i watch a lot of films but what a theater does is not what you can replicate at home but do you think it's going to come back bharti everything will learn to coexist because there's place for everything it's like going into a train which is already packed but there'll still be room for one more person to get in and after a while they'll settle down and then somebody else will come in and again there'll be place for one more person so even when you think of the bogey is jam packed there's still always place for one more and everybody settles down comfortably so i think that's what's going to happen with entertainment as well because you know we've always had this uh, conversation about theater we had uh, plays stage plays and then they said cinema will take over but today stage plays are just as popular absolutely in fact you have a lot of um, how do i say you know you have a lot of incestuous um working because you have people working here and there and yes. nobody's really loyal to one yes so it's quite interesting similarly i think ott and this and then they said television will come and that will kill cinema nothing killed cinema nothing killed the theater similarly now ott i mean it's taken over our lives i personally you know as a journalist and a critic we get something called screeners earlier we used to go and have press shows they used to have screenings for films for all of us because of covid they started sending us screeners which is a link where you sit at home and you watch the film at you know in the comfort of your house so we've all got used to the screeners now instead of going and seeing a film on the big screen we but now yes little by little by little those have also started so again this coexistence you we have screeners at home and we have uh, these screenings which we go to the theater and watch so i just think there's place for everything and i it's it's marvelous because you know it just caters to such a wider audience of people it's just bringing far more people into it so it's not like your audience is limited to say i'm just giving a figure of say 5 million and uh, so cinema was catering to 5 million but now if ott has come that has gone into 25 million so it's not like it's eaten away that 5 million it's it's still it's there. just grown it's become far vaster you know it's become so much more vast so you just have the audience growing and you have the phase of entertaining them also growing let me travel back with bharti as the young little girl okay and who would you give credit to the entire uh, you know this love for films this f- uh, love for writing like if i were to look back my father too used to catch you know hold my little finger and take me for all these classics you know okay and um, i come from a fairly humble bengali background but films was a very integral part of my growing up okay. and uh, so who would you give that credit to in your earliest memories well first and foremost i have to make a small correction out here i am not in love with cinema okay it, I, i wasn't in love with cinema i come from a family of journalists okay. my father was a journalist my grandfather had had a newspaper in kerala in the much before the independence what was the name of the paper I'm not very sure. I think it was called the Champion or Statesman or some the new okay. champion. Something I don't remember. Okay. But I've got cuttings actually. I wow. wish I could remember. Yeah, <laughs> or Pioneer or something like that. It was an English newspaper. So the writing is in your blood. Yes, it's in my blood, and uh, so therefore it just came very naturally to me. Mm-hmm. And I was in school, and like I told you, we never saw Hindi films or Tamil films or any of any films actually. We were not even a film-going family. 
and uh, so i did not grow up with any love for cinema and but the but there was this inborn love for writing which i was fighting because i said the entire family full of journalists i don't want to be a journalist and nobody was forcing me to do anything anyway but rebellious so i said uh, i want to be a chartered accountant you know in the ni- 60s you had no options and i thought chartered accountant sounded nice and different from journalism so they said do what you want and i was the only girl in my class in my school who opted to do accountancy as an option for when we were doing icsc i think we were two girls in that class nobody else and i did that just because i was rebellious and i wanted to become a chartered accountant so i went to bombay and i and i joined sydney college of commerce to do my bcom i majored in accounts and auditing but even before my first year of college i had started writing because i so wasn't co- used to exist in you the, yes. the math and the writing yes i am good in math even now my yeah. goodness yes, gracious that yeah. that's a very deadly yeah. combination and i'm married to a chartered accountant <laughs> <laughs> instead of becoming one i married one so you know what happened was because i wasn't used to cinema my parents had left me in the boarding in the last year of school and the other girls used to go see films all the time they dragged me to see films and the absurdities would keep hitting me so i would dash off letters to there were only two film magazines those days it was called star and star and there was another called film fair. film fair so i used to write letters to the editor they didn't know it was a school girl writing to them and they would not just publish it but give me the best letter prize which was a princely sum of 25 and 50 rupees in those days for a school girl which was quite good and uh, so that's how and they became familiar with my name without knowing it was a school girl so by the time i went to bombay and i met and i went to sydney college they were already familiar with my name and they asked me to do a column i was going to college and i was doing a column without knowing anybody in the film industry and for me whether it was dilip kumar ashok kumar rajender kumar manoj kumar they were all the same i didn't know one from the other but you know but i'm also one of those kind of one of, i am a person who if i take on something i do it properly and i learn and i do it properly you're a perfectionist absolute perfectionist only in my job so when i when i'm writing something i will make sure i know what i'm writing about therefore i got to understand what the whole film industry was about and now i love it i mean because they are the people who grew with me i was only 17 years old when i started working i was still in college so i i mean today i'm in my late 60s so it's been more than 50 years more than yeah more than 50 years so i and they've all grown up with me i've grown up with them shatrughan sinha must have been in his 20s when i was 17 so now he's in his 70s so you know we've all grown up really so now let's just come back to the book that you wrote anything but kamush yes which was uh, you know uh, shatrughan sinha ji's the autobiography or, the authorized biography the yes. authorized uh, autobiography yes. so i think you know you'd be the best person to tell us about him about the entire writing process because uh, to speak on behalf of somebody it's a voice that you need to use of his right to write right. it down yeah. uh, how was the entire experience you know for so many of our listeners who probably would want to do what you uh, have done you know right. maybe some tips and share with us uh, your entire process during that writing did can you, i just tell you in general yeah. when i write a book and specifically about his book first and foremost i think you've got to know your subject well whatever you are writing about even if it's fiction i've written a fiction my next one is a fiction is fiction but you don't know the amount of research that goes into it because i'm not a casual writer i understand i try to go deep into the subject understand what i'm writing about and chatru was somebody I, we call him sonu because we've just known him for so long but mr sinha is somebody who i have known much much before i wrote the book so like i said we've all grown up together so um I knew so much about him and his wife and his children. I was there when his children were born. I was there when he got married, and I knew Promi, his wife Poonam Sinha. I, I knew her much before she married him. I knew him before he married her. So you know, I've known them all for so long that it was very organic writing the book. I already knew so much, and also, you, uh, Mr. Sinha himself is the kind of person I would f- always say that he would have made a fantastic journalist. because he knows what makes headlines therefore when he talks he makes sure he gives you good copy and that continued right through the book also i would just put on the tape and the man knew exactly what to say so there wasn't anything i had to prompt him with he knew enough and he knew how to make it interesting and there was nothing that he shied away from whether it was about an ex girlfriend or it was a fight at home or it was you know he even had a fight with his own brother 
everything is there in the book simply because he didn't shy away from any of it that's what made it very very interesting so i would think first and foremost you should know your subject well second please work very hard and sincerely and be you know integrity is right on top i absolutely agree with yeah. you on that on integrity yeah. you because you must have integrity when you're writing yeah. otherwise it's going to show in your writing absolutely and the third thing is try and have some kind of balance when you're writing um don't lean completely it's like a politician don't lean completely to the left or to the right i mean try and have some sense and some logic when you're talking so i would think if you can have all and yes as a writer even when i write a review there are two things you must have substance you must have style but you must be very very credible and readable so i give importance to credibility and to readability if you are able to marry the two you come out with a very very um, very uh, readable book which will also be very informative so before we end uh, bharti i would like you to talk a little bit about this meta everybody's talking about the metaverse and everybody's talking about this entire you know mixing of this uh, these different worlds into mm. one world right yeah. what is your view point on this i just think these are um, marvel comic spin offs because you have the multiverse and you have this metaverse coming from facebook and you have i they just words and names just to amuse ourselves and i really don't believe uh, if the, even if there are a lot of other verses it's not just this universe i just think um we are letting our imagination run right and time will tell absolutely time will tell yeah and a few things that um, bharti does every day as a writer who's been there for so long what are the little tips that you'd like to give us some things that you do every day you know to hone you and continue your craft first and foremost stay very healthy because if you're unhealthy it's going to show in your writing so stay healthy physically mentally and emotionally be stable uh, yes we all go through problems but come back and make yourself uh, you know stabilize yourself so i would think stay healthy in every way and on every realm that's very important i told you be very very professional so even when i write a review i go back do my research even if it's a film that i know is going to flop i'll still do my research like for instance there's a film called ek villain returns it just came out 2 days ago i saw it i didn't like it but i knew this film is not going to be appreciated i wrote the review but i made sure that i made references to the earlier film because it's a it's a spiritual successor to a 20, 2014 film so i made sure that i remembered the 2014 film made a reference to it do your homework be very very thorough and don't just uh, rely on google because they could give you a lot of misinformation i do a lot of research i get my background material ready and then i work and i and night is a beautiful time to work when nobody disturbs you so i work at night after midnight after the whole world has gone to sleep my laptop comes out how wonderful thank you so much bharti for being on today's uh, episode pleasure and uh, thank you once again pleasure mama and i think uh, the next time we talk i'd like to know your story sure i will <laughs> share that with you thank you so much pleasure thank you Do you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favorite streaming services Spotify Amazon Music Apple Podcast and of course on all other major streaming services with loads of love we are the mohua show where we talk imandari se